The scenic property of Locust Grove in Louisville, Kentucky attracts many visitors each year. On this 55-acre, 18th-century farm site, the main attraction is the Krogan Mansion, a house built in 1790 which was home to George Rogers Clark during the last years of his life. To commemorate the time Clark spent here, a bust of them has been placed next to the visitor's center. George Rogers Clark is portrayed in the bust as a fairly young man dressed in a military uniform. Since only two portraits of Clark were painted while he was alive, and both when he was an older man, all younger portrayals of him are based upon descriptions of his physical appearance in primary documents. Based on these descriptions, we know that Clark was over six feet tall, well built, and had red hair. Since Clark's stay at Locust Grove was only while he was older, it might at first seem like an odd choice to include a representation of his younger self when we know what he looked like at the time of his residence here. But this choice was probably made both because the events in Clark's life he is most famous for include his military exploits as a younger man, and also because he was in poor health during his later years. The bust, which was dedicated in 1986, has a plaque on the bottom stating that it was selected and presented to Locust Grove by the Sons of the American Revolution, sculpted by Ann Allen and cast in Stuttgart, Germany. The inscription on the concrete column supporting the bus gives the viewer four different statements about the life of George Rogers Clark. The first of these being the date of his birth and death as 1752 to 1818, which is accurate. The other three statements about Clark's life, that he was founder of Louisville, Kentucky, that he was conqueror of the Northwest Territory, and that his trail ended at Locust Grove, not only are just questionably accurate, but also represent a narrow and biased viewpoint on the events of Clark's life. George Rogers Clark first visited Kentucky as a 20-year-old surveyor at a time when settlers were pouring in due to the land being opened up by the Treaty of Fort Stanwix. This treaty was contested by the Cherokee and Shawnee tribes who were using these areas at the time as hunting grounds. When these tensions boiled over, Clark became involved in Lord Dunmore's war fighting to keep the land which had been illegitimately taken from the Native Americans. When George Rogers Clark later became a leader in the Revolutionary War, he planned an invasion into Illinois County that would start from Corn Island, current site of the Falls of the Ohio. To do this, Clark not only brought recruited soldiers, but also escorted 80 civilians to Corn Island to start a settlement. Clark felt that this settlement not only could serve as a valuable communication post, but also concealed his true purpose for being there, which was the invasion. Clark and his troops left less than a month after arriving at Corn Island, making his role in the creation and support of Louisville very limited. Not only does the claim that George Rogers Clark, being the founder of Louisville, downplay the role of the 80 civilians who stayed, but also ignores the historical presence of Native Americans in this area. Archaeological artifacts such as arrowheads and pottery indicate settlements in the Ohio River Valley as long ago as 12,000 years. During the so-called founding of Louisville, Native American tribes like the Shawnee used this area to support large villages through farming during the summer months. Therefore, the phrase founder of Louisville should be used with caution because it fails to acknowledge the claim that the Native Americans had to the land before Clark's arrival. Another phrase on the bust which could be more thoroughly examined is the conqueror of the Northwest Territory. This hardly seems an accurate description of his involvement in expanding the territory of the United States. After Clark left Corn Island with his soldiers, he invaded three settlements without ever having to fire a shot. When he conquered Kaskaskia, he negotiated peace with the townspeople through promises of religious freedom and a treaty between France and the United States. Furthermore, his victory at Cahokia was accomplished through promises of neutrality between previously warring tribes. Perhaps it would be more accurate to call his conquest of the Northwest Territory an occupation instead. When Clark did have to return the following year to retake one of these settlements from the British, he mounted a surprise attack on Vincennes during bad weather. While Clark's takeover of Fort Sackville at Vincennes was successful, it did not come without controversy. After Clark had secured victory, his men captured a group of Frenchmen and Native Americans. Though the Frenchmen were released, Clark decided to make an example out of the Native Americans by having them tomahawked 
and scalped for all that at the fort to see. During the following years, Clark would continue to struggle against the Native Americans, eventually resorting to destroying entire villages to defeat them. Though Clark did have limited military victories, perhaps it should not be considered appropriate to celebrate his conquering of the Northwest when his actions contributed so much to the suffering of Native Americans. Later in his life, Clark was given 150,000 acres for his service in the war, which he would soon lose all due to his alcoholism and war debts, eventually settling in a small cabin near Clarksville, Indiana, working in a grist mill. After suffering both a severe stroke and injury, Clark moved into his sister's home, the Krogan Mansion, as a dependent. He lived the rest of his days there until a second stroke ended his life in 1818. Though he originally was buried at Locust Grove, the property eventually became overgrown and Clark's body was moved to Cave Hill Cemetery, which would be his trail's true end. While the accuracy of calling George Rogers Clark the founder of Louisville and the conqueror of the Northwest can be disputed, something that is beyond dispute is the insensitivity that is shown to the Native American community when monuments like these appear across our landscape.